In this video, I'm going to share with you the seven habits you need to start in 2021 in order to grow your business. I'm Megan Minns, and I help online business owners learn how to step out of the weeds and nitty gritty of running their business and into the role of CEO. As the CEO of your business, you are the one setting the tone and the direction for everything for your team, for your clients, and how much your company grows. I find that most CEOs aren't fully grasping the fact that your business cannot outpace your own personal growth. So how you show up and act and take care of yourself on a daily basis really impacts the success and the likelihood of you hitting your goals for your business over the course of the year. The good news is that now is the perfect time to recalibrate, recenter, and establish some new habits habits for the new year. They're going to help you and your business be successful. That's why I'm sharing the seven habits you need to have in place as the CEO in order to grow your business. The first few habits we're going to chat through are all about you and the personal care you take as the CEO. And then we will talk about habits you need in place for your business and your team. The first habit you need to have in place is prioritizing sleep. Whether you're a morning person or a night owl, either is fine, but it's really important that you are not only getting enough sleep every night, but that you are making it a priority in your life. And that's because as the CEO, you taking care of yourself physically is critical. And while sometimes it can feel like we want to take advantage of that short term win and stay up late and get more work done in the end, that will sabotage you, your health, your happiness, and the success of your business. So it's really important that we don't go for those short-term wins. And instead we play the long game and prioritize you getting enough sleep every night, day in and day out so that you can show up as your best self to work every day, fully rested and ready to go. As a night owl myself, this is definitely something I have struggled with in the past. And I notice a huge difference in how my business is running, how my team and clients feel and how I feel on days or weeks where I'm getting enough sleep and other times where I'm not, and I'm not prioritizing it. One easy way to get started with prioritizing sleep is to identify an ideal bedtime, which may not sound the most exciting, but it really helps. And all you need to do is set up a few reminders to help ingrain this new bedtime. So whether it's a reminder on your phone or lights dimming automatically in your living room at a certain time, whatever works for you. I've personally found that having some type of reminder or cue in place really helps me start to establish a new bedtime. The second habit you should have in place is to follow through on your morning routine. Now I know hearing about a morning routine probably sounds like a broken record, but it is really, really critical to get you out of a reactive way of handling your day and into more of a proactive state. It honestly, honestly doesn't really matter what you're doing in the morning. So I don't think you have to work out or do anything in particular in order to have an effective morning routine, as long as it is your own personal routine that helps you start your day the way you want to. So I find for most of us, that means putting us into a state where we feel confident, we feel calm, and we feel ready to show up and tackle the day. When you don't do your morning routine, you will absolutely be in a state of reactivity. You'll react to emails, client messages, team messages, social media, and I see a huge difference on days where I do my morning routine and days where I don't. So if you don't already have a morning routine in place that helps you start your day proactive and instead of reactive, now's a great time to set one. My morning routine has looked really different over the years, and right now I'm at a place where it's actually fairly simple. I come into my office, I light a candle, I set the mood in my office, play some good music, and I pull out my journal, and I spend a lot of quality time doing journaling and my mindset ritual. I find that for me, as long as I'm doing that, I am doing exactly what I'm setting out to achieve, and I'm entering a state of mind of proactivity where I'm calm and confident as I sit down down to work. If I feel like working out or doing anything else, then great. I will make time for that. But as long as I do that journaling and mindset routine in the morning, then I am all set. So find out what your morning routine should look like. And maybe it's as simple as one or two things. It doesn't have to be complicated. The third habit you should have is to have hobbies that don't benefit your business or anything logical like that. For several years, I felt like I didn't have any hobbies outside of work and business and trying to be a better business owner. Even the time I would spend resting or relaxing where I was reading, I was often reading books about 
business or trying to be a better business person. Now, I love to learn and I think learning is wonderful, but a really fun and important part of your life should be stuff outside of business and work. Even if you love what you do, which I hope that you do, this is really going to help you feel fulfilled outside of work and outside of business because as we've all experienced, sometimes we have bad days at business or work. Something can bring us down, something can frustrate us, that's absolutely normal. So it's really important that we have things outside of business and work that fill us up, fill our cup, make us happy, bring us joy. And I think by intentionally establishing a hobby that you enjoy just because it's fun and doesn't benefit you in any way, shape or form is critical. Some of my hobbies are reading fiction novels, not nonfiction, like specifically fantasy romance fiction (laughs) novels. Very fun. I love reading those. Sometimes I will play a video game like The Sims or Roller Coaster Tycoon or even sketch on my iPad. So there's a, a lot of different hobbies like that that I have in place that don't benefit the business, don't help me be a healthier, better person, don't really bring in any money, but by bringing joy and fun to my life, it changes everything about how I show up at business and at work every single day. So I'd love for you to create some hobbies in your life and make it a real habit, something that's part of how you decompress on a daily basis that helps you disconnect from work and reconnect to what brings you joy besides work. Before we move on to habit number four, I wanna go ahead and let you know that we actually have a free downloadable habit tracker that you can grab right now at meganmins.com forward slash habit tracker. You can also click the link beneath this video and you can download the habit tracker PDF, identify and list out what habits you're building right now in 2021 and start tracking them on a daily basis for free. Habit number four is to lead an all team weekly meeting once a week. Whether you have one virtual assistant or 10 or more full-time employees, it's really important as the CEO and business owner that you are setting the tone for the week for your entire team. And I recommend you do this by meeting once a week at the very beginning of your week. This is a great time to review important metrics, how every project is moving forward, key outcomes or announcements that everyone needs to be aware of, any wins you want to celebrate, and really a time for you to connect with your team all together. You can really start to build true company culture when you're meeting with your entire team, even when you're remote, and even when you're working with contractors by having this solid connection point every single week that's on everyone's calendars that everyone comes to and can guarantee that they will get some face time with you as the CEO and with the entire team as well. This is one of the things we help our empowered CEO clients incorporate into their business businesses, whether they have contractors or full-time teams is weekly team meetings. And time and time again, we hear from our clients what an impact this makes on how they feel as the business owner and how their team feels as they're showing up throughout the week. That grounding starting point right at the beginning of your week is critical. So this is absolutely a habit you should be putting into place for 2021. Habit number five is to review your company's metrics at least once a week. Reviewing your company's important metrics regularly is key so that you understand if you're on course and on track or where you may need to change gears, tweak the strategy and make adjustments. I recommend tracking your metrics at least once a week, but you could always do it more often. So if you wanted to, daily would be my other recommendation. I find that it's easier to either do daily or once a week. Any other interval can get a little confusing, but definitely start tracking your metrics and reviewing them at least once a week if you're not already. I'm actually gonna be sharing a video all about the metrics or key performance indicators that I recommend you have in place in your business over the next week and actually two weeks because we have two videos coming out about it. So be sure to subscribe to the channel now so you can watch those videos when they come out. And if you're watching this a little later, be sure to check those out next so that you can actually understand what KPIs you should have in place and why they're so important. The sixth habit you should have in place is to review and audit your team's work regularly. Now, this isn't just about giving your team feedback when they ask for it. This is actually about proactively and regularly auditing the work that your team is doing autonomously. As the CEO and as a manager of other people, it's really important that you take on the ownership of coaching, mentoring, and supporting your team so that they can continue to improve and become more and more independent and self-led over time. So as the CEO, I recommend that you regularly start auditing and reviewing what your team is doing every single week. Now, this could be once a week. You could make time for it every single day. It's completely up to you. But what I want you to do is start to look at the work your team is doing already. So if you have someone answering emails, 
pop into your inbox, look at some of the emails they're sending out and give them some feedback on your next one-on-one -on -one meeting. Or if you have people who are assistant coaches in your programs, watch calls they have with your clients, give them feedback and support on how they can continue to improve and become better at their job. Or if you have someone who is creating Instagram posts for you, writing captions, answering direct messages, check on how that's going, give them feedback. It doesn't mean you're micromanaging. You're not stopping them from posting the Instagram post, sending the email or having the call. But what you are doing is following up on what they're doing. <laughs> Watch what they're doing, giving them support and feedback. They will actually really enjoy this. You do wanna set this expectation up front and it doesn't have to be weird. It really is how you can just continue to be their teacher and their coach and their mentor and help them continue to improve and do better and feel more confident over time. For those of you who have employees, I think this is even more important and it's gonna help you start to release control more and more. You will start to see that your team is doing a great job and nine times out of 10, you're gonna be blown away by what they're already doing and feel a sense of pride and joy that you wouldn't have felt otherwise. A lot of times our team members are doing things that are incredible that we aren't even aware of, and maybe they don't even see how incredible they are. So it's not all about critical feedback. It's about supporting them, cheering them on, and then of course, identifying ways that they can improve when there are some. Habit number seven is to have a monthly financial date. As a business owner, it's really important that you understand where your money is coming from and where your money is going. So every single month, you should make sure you have a money date or a CEO date and you focus on money. This is a great time to look at your profit and loss statement, review all of your expenses, review your income. If you're working with a bookkeeper, you can actually use this time to review your books from the past month give them any information that they need. And it's a great time for you to also move any money around if you are allocating certain percentages into a savings account or a emergency fund, whatever you're doing. But checking on your money like this once a month is an incredible habit to build if you're not doing this already. If you're not working with a bookkeeper already, I highly recommend you make it a priority to work with a bookkeeper in 2021. It's gonna make this money date so much easier and it's also going to remove a lot of administrative burden that might be on your plate right now. I actually work with a company called Bench. That's who I hire for my books and I've actually been using them for years and years and they are in Incredible. I love how easy they make it for me to see data, not only from the past month, but the entire time I've been using them. The software is beautiful. It's easy to message my bookkeeper and they also offer monthly calls with your bookkeepers as well. Now this video isn't sponsored or anything by Bench. I just really wanted to share a resource that has been so valuable for me as a business owner and has helped me feel more confident and comfortable when it comes to managing money and having my own monthly money date. If you wanna know more about Bench, you can go to meganmins.com forward slash bench check it out and see if it's something that would benefit you as well. Don't forget to download the free habit tracker. You can go to meganmins.com forward slash habit tracker to grab that now. And if you aren't sure what you're even really working towards in 2021 and you need a little bit of help reconnecting to your vision, then make sure to click the video on the screen right now where you can learn all about how to create your vision and how to create a vision board for 2021 that actually works.